It has been more than a month since the first reported coronavirus death in the United States. It was right here in Washington state. Since then, there have been more than 141,000 cases across the country. 2,300 people have died in Washington state. 195 people have died at least. More than 4,000 have tested positive, although about 92% of people who have gotten tested have come up negative. Now, after saying just a week ago that he wanted churches to be open on Easter, President Trump now says social distancing must continue through the end of April, capitulating to the advice of doctors and scientists and acknowledging tens of thousands of Americans can die from coronavirus. NBC's Peter Alexander reports. From the president, a new timeline announcing the federal government's social distancing guidelines will stay in place Thank you. for at least another month. The peak in death rate is likely to hit in two weeks. Therefore, we will be extending our guidelines to April 30th to slow the spread. The president Sunday backing off his hope that the country would open up by Easter, now circling a new date on the calendar when he says life will finally get back to normal. We can expect that by June 1st, we will be well on our way to recovery. We think by June 1st, a lot of Great things will be happening. Nothing would be worse than declaring victory before the victory is won. It comes as the president is now bracing Americans for a significant death toll. If we could hold that down, as we're saying to 100,000, it's a horrible number. Maybe even less, but to 100,000. So we have between 100 and 200,000. The White House Coronavirus Task Force emphasizing those higher figures. It's anywhere in the model between 80,000 and 160,000, maybe even potentially 200,000 people succumbing to this. I think it's entirely conceivable that if we do not mitigate to the extent that we're trying to do, that you could reach that number. Yeah, 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 it's possible. The president stressing the U.S. is facing an unprecedented crisis. I've been watching that for the last week on television. Body bags all over in hallways. I've been watching them bring in trailer trucks, freezer trucks. They're freezer trucks because they can't handle the bodies. There's so many of them. I've seen things that I've never seen before. I mean, I've seen them, but I've seen them on television in faraway lands. I've never seen them in our country. Those comments following this dire assessment from Dr. Deborah Burks. No state, no metro area will be spared. Well, most rent payments are due the first of the month, and that's just two days away. But a lot of people who are out of a job right now are wondering if they need to pay rent, and if so, how? King 5's Kayla Lafferty explains what the options are. Now, if you live in Seattle or anywhere else in the state outside of Seattle city limits, there are some differences in what to do if you can't pay rent for this upcoming month. Now, starting back on March 3rd, Seattle Mayor Jenny Durkin enacted a 60 day moratorium on rent. So if you live in the city, you cannot be evicted if you do not pay rent for April and into May. This also protects you from having to pay late fees. As for the state, it's a little bit different. Governor Jay Inslee's declaration only covers not paying rent. This declaration does not protect you from late fees and it ends on April 17th. Now under all of this, you're only protected from eviction based on the status of your rent. So you could still be evicted for committing a crime, putting yourself, other tenants or property in danger. Now for those of you worried about making your mortgage payment, the state says to get in touch with your lender um, or so that you can work out uh, with them waiving late fees or setting up a payment plan. Now, whether you live in Seattle or anywhere else in the state of Washington, officials are saying to get in contact with your landlord or lender to figure out some of your options. In Seattle, Kayla Lafferty, King 5 News. All right, thank you, Kayla. Meantime, so many small businesses have had to close because of the outbreak. They can get loans from the $2 trillion rescue package. And as Michelle Lee reports, those loans could eventually be forgiven. We've heard small business owners say they don't need any more loans. They don't need debt upon debt. But when you take a look at the stimulus bill, they need to understand that these loans could essentially become grants. Remember, this is all about getting cash to businesses and people so they can keep afloat and avoid defaulting. We talked to UW professor Thomas Gilbert, and he says he thinks this part of the stimulus is well designed because if a business owner can keep their workers on the payroll through the end of the year, the loans will be forgiven. So as long as the loan is used to pay rent, to stay in your shop or pay people, the government will basically take over your payroll and fixed costs for roughly up to two and a half months. 
there, I think it's all, it's all a story of incentives. If you immediately give cash to just everybody, then this is literally just a giant bailout. And then once you just give cash, then there's no incentives, right? I can go, I can go and do, I, I can pay myself. Economists say two months is being used as a reference because China was in total lockdown for about two months. And if we can trust the numbers out of China, they say, then the hope is that we could contain the virus and get back to work by June. Of course, there still is some concern that the loans will not come out quick enough. And that is something that economists worry about, especially since everyday matters for a lot of small business owners. Back to you. All right, thank you, Michelle. Meantime, a lot of us doing report, remote reporting, remote anchoring at King 5, and it's back to remote online school this morning for so many kids in so many school districts in Washington State, including the largest, Seattle. We spoke exclusively with the Seattle school, uh, school superintendent, Denise Juno, who says it's too early to call this a lost academic year. I think that we can actually maintain some sort of learning and some structure with families. Our big thing is that we want to make sure that families have the supports they need to set up schedules at home, to make sure that they are touching base with their teachers, to make sure that some sort of learning is happening. She says teachers have been reaching out to parents to prepare them with the at-home lesson plan for this week and then moving forward. A big focus is, of course, on students who don't have Wi-Fi or can't afford computers. Another question, how much of this school year will have to be made up later, if any? And Juno says taking care of high school seniors is another priority. We know this is a huge milestone for them, and so we want to make sure that they stay on track. So we are reviewing the technology that we've had going out to seniors. We are making sure that they're all going to have technology and working with teachers and counselors to deliver instruction that way. And so it will flow down from that point. And, of course, different schools and school districts have different approaches to remote learning. On king5.com, we have a list of all the resources for the 10 largest school districts in our area. You can see, including uh, Lake Washington, Edmonds, Tacoma as well. We can send it right to your phone. Just text the word school to us at 206-448-4545. All right, well, infants are at high risk for coronavirus, so researchers are trying to figure out how pregnant women and their babies could be affected. Our HealthLink reporter, Amity Adrisi, tells us more about what they've all learned so far. Research is showing that these babies may be exposed to the coronavirus through their mother, but not in the way that Zika affected a baby's brain development. Now, these two studies say it's likely that the babies are being exposed, but it's not necessarily a bad thing. Typically, the placenta protects the baby from any viruses the mother might get. But these new studies are showing that the coronavirus might be getting through that protective bubble. There were two studies recently published in the Journal of American Medical Association. In one study, doctors worked with the Wuhan Children's Hospital to look at babies born to mothers who were positive for COVID-19. They found that three babies born to infected mothers tested positive for coronavirus, even after all infection control measures were taken during delivery. Right now, all three babies have recovered and are doing just fine. In a second study, also out of Wuhan, researchers found interesting information tucked away inside newborn blood antibodies, which recognize the virus. Basically, the babies were exposed to the virus before they were born, and their little bodies launched an immune attack. So none of these babies got sick after they were born. Does that mean they're immune? Researchers aren't ready to say that. Basically, they need more studies to build a stronger base of knowledge. And we'll keep following that research for HealthLink. I'm Amatia Dreesi, King 5 News. All right, thank you, Amity. Now some financial news. Amazon will start screening employees for high temperatures uh, each day, starting at sites in Seattle here and in New York City, according to the Seattle Times. Last week, an Amazon spokesperson said the company advised workers to self-screen, i.e. test their own temperature. Amazon has not publicly revealed how many of its employees have tested positive for coronavirus so far. Macy's is seeing a huge drop in sales, and that's forcing the store to furlough the majority of its employees, about 130,000 people. So the physical stores are closed, but their online store is still open. Macy's has also suspended its dividend, drawn a line of credit, and even canceled some orders. The Summer Olympics has a new date. The Tokyo Games rescheduled for July 23rd through August 8th, 2021. 
That's almost exactly a year after they were supposed to happen this summer. Of course, Olympic organizers have said the cost of rescheduling the games will be massive, with some reports estimating in the billions of dollars, most of that borne by Japanese taxpayers. The Dubai Expo 2020 is also being delayed until next year. According to Bloomberg, organizers estimate 11 million visitors would have traveled to be there. 192 countries participate in the Expo, which showcases culture, business and technology from around the world. And Dubai is in the United Arab Emirates, which has more than 500 cases of coronavirus right now.